my first fight ever, I got paid a thousand one hundred dollars because my opponent did not make the weight. Otherwise, I would have probably made even less because I got 30% of his purse. <laughs> This is Georges Saint Pierre, and this is how I spend and save my first million dollar. I'm born in Montreal, Canada. I grew up in Saint Isidore, the South Shore, where there is a lot of farms, not a lot of things going on. I got into uh, karate at first because I was bullied at school. I didn't know what I wanted to become until I saw the first UFC on TV when I was a teenager. I was at school, but I was studying more because it was the right thing to do and because my parents pushed me. We didn't have a lot of money when I when I grew up. We were not poor either because I every day I had money for school but we were not wealthy I had to work as security in a hip-hop nightclub as a garbage man I always find time to train working and studying in the same time my number one priority my number one goal is to become champion in ultimate fighting championship I fought a few times in local shows I was undefeated at the time my first big fight on the local scene I was fighting a guy named Pete Spratt a UFC veteran he probably thought that he was just coming in to collect a paycheck and beat a young a young kid I beat him and that's when the door opened the UFC recruit me but at that time I was not making enough money things were so tight to me that I couldn't afford to lose a fight because if I would have lose a fight I would have been in debt I remember my first fight in UFC I made 3,000 to show plus 3,000 to win then I had a second fight I made 4,000 to show plus 4,000 to win. Then I won that fight by knockout. That fight gave, gave me a, a, a chance to go for the title right away. I had a chance to pursue my dream. I was studying and I was working as well. I had like a crazy schedule. I sat down with my parents and I told them, I said, listen, if things doesn't go well, I can always come back to school. But for the next session, I would like to just focus on training because I have a title shot and it's a, it's a big opportunity. And they agreed. That's when I start to train full time. I lost that fight, but it made me a much better fighter because I've learned a lot from that experience and I rebound immediately after I finally get myself another title shot and I beat my Matt Hughes. So I didn't have to go back to school, you know, go back to my old life. It was after my fight with John Fitch, I had to renew my contract, but I was champion and I was doing pretty well. So if I finish my contract, I had big offers waiting for me. So the UFC decided to renew my contract and that's when I made my first million. I start working with financial advisor right away. First, because I'm, Can I'm a Canadian citizen, the tax report is very complicated. A lot of athletes, they make the mistake, they don't pay their taxes. So I made sure my, my structure was solid and, and all good. So a lot of athletes, I, I think they start right away to invest on, on luxury cars, uh, stuff like that, jewelry, but I didn't do that. If I make money, I need to make myself more competent to become better. I travel the world in order to gain more knowledge and become better. We talked about how I save my money. Now let's talk about how I spend it. The first thing I did is to clear all my parent debt because my parents are the ones that support me since the beginning, you know? They took care of me as a baby, so that was the first thing I did. And when my mom call me crying with my dad on the line and say that's your money we don't need your help it was like one of the most beautiful one of the best day of my life my dad was my first martial art teacher but he was too busy because he, he worked like maybe six, 60 hours a week for 30 years you know like he never stopped he loved it <laughs> so he put me in a karate school paying my parents death 50,000 Second thing that, that I bought, two cars for my parents. Japanese car, a uh, Toyota. They didn't really want to have something from me, but I, I forced them. Their car was broke all the time, and so I bought them a new car. And I, I want them to have a, a more luxury car, but they, they really didn't want it. Like they say, oh, the, a good uh, Japanese car will be something that, that will last for long. And like at that time, it was maybe 20, maybe 40,000, I would say 40. $40,000 for my parent cars. 
I bought myself a, vi a, 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 a car as well, Nissan Xterra. My vehicle was pretty bad, so I needed something safe. And I always love SUV because in Montreal, there's a lot of snowstorm. I also felt that in a SUV, you're normally higher, so it's, it's safer. My biggest fear is to get in, into a car crash and, and, and not being able to do what I love to do in my life. Nissan Xterra, $20,000. One of my uh, sister, she wanted to have her master degree to take care of her family and be able to free herself to pursue uh, her dream. And I gave her money all the, like every few months to to you know to to keep rolling. You know, like now she's still doing like she's doing it because she has kids. She's working and she's still doing it. Ten thousand dollar for my sister to get her master degree. To tell you the truth, like it would be very boring the show if I tell you the truth. Like my parent mortgage, my parent cars, my sisters, this. There is nothing else that I did on the short notice that, oh, bang, you know, like I spread it, you know. Another $50,000 for my family, gifts, expenses, to help them pursuing their dreams. So this $30,000, is all the friends that I helped who told me that they would pay me back, but they never did. So I help a lot of people and I would say it's about $30,000 that I lost. It was okay. Uh, I helped them get out of bad situation, but the, the thing is when you start making a lot of money, you get a lot of people coming at you and everybody has problems. The easy way to get out of financial problems is to borrow money from someone you know Take it and never give it back. If you lend money to someone, make sure you can afford to lose it. I spent a lot of money traveling around the world to learn new fighting skills. I went to Thailand to learn Muay Thai. I went to Brazil to, to get better at Jiu Jitsu. In New York to get better in Jiu Jitsu as well. I went to Los Angeles train, train with Fred Roach, a famous boxing coach, to get better boxing skills. France, to, to work on my striking skills as well, because I knew I couldn't stay in Montreal here in order to, to grow and become a better fighter. I needed to, to learn expertise from others. And when I say traveling, I'm talking about training, classes, the, the food, airplane, the hotels. That's a lot, yeah. 200,000 now uh, traveling for training, $200,000. It's hard to become champion, but it's even harder to stay champion because you become the target. So that's why when I made my first million dollar, I spent a lot of money and I invested on myself, you know, in order to get better. I bought myself a jacuzzi and a, a ice bath so I can switch. I believe it helped my, my body to recuperate better when I have very hardcore training sessions. I spent about, I would say, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars on that. And it was a good investment, I have to say. The last thing that I bought with my first million, it was a condo. Five hundred thousand dollars, but I needed to do renovation in it, and it cost me about 100K. Condo plus renovation, $600,000. So I'm really into dinosaur fossil. I love paleontology, and I bought for, I would say, $20,000. Megalodon tooth, uh, mosasaurs, jaw, Tyrannosaurus rex, all kinds of different uh, animals I used to live uh, a long time uh, a long time ago. Uh, at that time I was studying, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but now I know that if I would not be a fighter, I would be a paleontologist and I would probably be on the field digging and I mean, paleontology, I love it because you learn about the past and if you learn about the past, you can understand the present better and predict the future. Ferras, my head coach, gave me a, another megalodon tooth, a big one. It was my favorite fossil, fossil that I have because it represents the, the alpha predator, the, the goat predator of all time. That tooth that I have, at one point I was fixing my sound system 
it made a, a lot of noise and it vibrate and my tooth felt on the floor and broke. But I still have it today. I can't glue it, it, it shatters in pieces. Dinosaur fossil, 20K. When you start making money in, in combat sport, you have to keep in mind that it's very hard to reach the top, but it's very easy to go back down. Make sure to invest on yourself because if you don't get better, the game will catch up to you. So you need to make sure that you invest on yourself, get new knowledge, make sure you have treatment to, in order to recuperate better. So invest this thing on yourself. If I would have go back in time and tell the kid that I was, that one day I will become world champion in mixed martial art, I think I will believe because I always knew that I had all the tools. I worked very hard and also I was very lucky because I had the chance to meet incredible mentors and the stars were all al aligned for me. When a door opened to me, I was getting in. If the door were all closed, I was breaking in to create my own opportunity. I grew up in saint Isidore, uh, Quebec, Canada, and the mayor of the city called me and says that this coming summer will be the inauguration of a statue of, of me in, in fighting pause that they will put in the middle of the uh, of the center of the city. So it's a, it's a great honor for me. Like Rocky Balboa, but in the small town of Saint Isidore. <laughs> That's what it will be like. <laughs> Thank you, it's a, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me.